disability throughout time yours and mine the stories are in the bones lasting across europe and america the rise of factories brought about the industrial era. Human labor was put in service to the machines and the mines and furnaces that produced them. The numbers of disabled increased profoundly through injuries on the job. Meanwhile, as the disparities grew between the titans of industry and laborers who lived to increase their wealth, but not their own, societies had to solve the problem of what to do with those who could no longer produce wealth through their labor. A street in the early days of Akron, Ohio. Beggars are panhandling. Um, for the poor. Food for my family, please. These beggars are so annoying. The city must do something about them. The poor house movement in the United States was perceived as a practical solution to both house and provide upkeep for indigents and disabled people. The giant hospitals grew into asylums or state institutions that housed and kept disabled people out of sight and out of mind. Attitudes changed from believing people with disabilities could be helped or treated medically to the notion that they were incurables and should be hidden away from society. Insulting words were used to label people with disabilities. Idiot, moron, imbecile. Do you know how those words came to be used to describe people with disabilities? We must look back to a movement in the United States that began in the early years of the 20th century. It was the eugenics movement. Eugenics was used to encompass the idea of modification of natural selection through selective breeding for the improvement of humankind, according to Jeremiah A. Baroness. Meet Henry Goddard. In 1908, Goddard brought Alfred Binet's intelligence tests to the United States, which provided the foundation for IQ testing in the U.S. He helped define the term moron, as we will see as we visit him giving a lecture. I would like to explain how the IQ test is used to describe various categories of mental ability. We see on the chart, cognitive disabilities fall in three broad categories, idiot, imbecile, and feeble-minded. Feeble-minded being the least severe. However, the word was imprecise and unscientific, so I created a replacement, barring a Greek root word meaning dull or foolish. I coined the term moron. It is worth stating the obvious. Today, none of these words are appropriate as medical terms. In Ohio in the early 1900s, Goddard's thesis that defective children should be segregated during their entire reproductive lives was a major influence in the early eugenics movement. An attempt was made to open a segregation colony for such children. We have the results of your son's IQ test. The good news is he's not an idiot or imbecile. He's what we call a moron. However, his cognitive ability will never develop past that of a 12-year-old. He will not be able to move through society on his own. What do you mean? Your son is not the only example of a person with this kind of affliction. He and other morons should not be allowed to mingle in society. We are in the process of setting up a camp for those who should not be spreading their kind. Spreading? What are you talking about? To be blunt, your son should never procreate as his children will undoubtedly bear the same condition or worse. Therefore, in order to live in our camp, Danny will be sterilized so there is no chance of him reproducing or creating a new generation of morons. Will I be able to visit him? No, it is in your best interest and the child's best interest to forget and move on. 
this is my son you're talking about. He's sweet and gentle and has not caused any grief in our home or our community. Your son is a danger to our progression as a human race. He's only six years old. I cannot let him go. He should have the chance of finding his way through life. There are things he can do to contribute as he grows older. What if eventually he wants to grow up and marry? That's his right as a free citizen in this country. Well, Mr. Smith, there is a law being proposed in the Ohio State Legislature that would mandate separation of defectives from the general population as well as sterilization. Many scientists and psychiatrists have testified. It is understood. The character of a nation is determined primarily by its racial qualities. That is the hereditary, physical, mental, and moral temperamental traits of its people. In other words, Mr. Smith, better breeding will rid America of its flaws. Nobody is gonna rid me of my son. This law has not yet been passed and I'm gonna work with those who are opposed. Eugenics advocates kept pushing for new laws to protect the gene pool and improve the quality of society. Here is advocate Hannah S. Hall addressing a community group in Ohio in the early 1900s. So to conclude, I would like to quote Henry Goddard. The idiot is not our greatest problem. He is indeed loathsome. Nevertheless, he lives his life and is done. He does not continue the race with a line of children like himself. It is the moron type that makes for us our great problem. That's not right. Yeah, all the morons are ruining our society. We must not allow them to have children. You are wrong, sir. Morons and idiots aren't the problem. We can't pin all our problems on one group of people. When they are draining millions of dollars and consuming our resources, we can. With what you are proposing, even more money will be wasted. Eugenics is based on the belief that we are all just mindless animals with one goal to reproduce. We are all human beings. This attempt in Ohio was thwarted, as was the 1915 law that would have gone one step further than Goddard to the sterilization of defectives. However, in some of the states, people were forcibly sterilized through the 1970s. Disability Throughout time Yours and mine The stories Are in the bones Lasting stones Hey, 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 the bones are crying. Hey, 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 the truth is flying. No more, no more. Great.